Hello, my lovely Calimaris. This is Calimara here. Today, we are doing a very highly requested redesign of Oka Ruto from Yandere Simulator. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We do redesigns here. I do have a bit of a storyline going on for this particular series where I basically make completely new characters from scratch using the original Yandere Simulator characters as prompts. So I highly recommend checking out the other redesigns before this. But if you're here because you need background noise while you draw, then I got you. So first things first, what I like to do when I do these redesigns is to take a look at the source material and figure out what I'm working with. A bit of a class critique for old Yandere Dev. Once again, I want to clarify that I'm not criticizing the art because I genuinely think that the artists who worked on the primary art assets did a fantastic job and I know that they're only following Yandere Dev's directions. So know that I'm purely criticizing those directions. And boy, do I have some things to say about this particular concept. So aside from the fact her name is literally just a cult, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth that he's attributing the occult to just straight up devil worshippers who perform satanic rituals. Like, I get that the whole point of the game is entirely based on stereotypes trying to be both satire and a serious game, but seriously? Now, I personally am not an occultist, but it took me a few seconds to just google occult and learn what they're really about, and I suggest you guys do too. Now, the simple definition of the occult is that it is a category of supernatural beliefs and practices which generally fall outside the scope of religion and science, encompassing such phenomena involving otherworldly agencies such as mysticism, spirituality, and magic. Another source says that it is various theories and practices involving a belief in and knowledge or use of supernatural forces or beings. Where it starts to go awry is when we look at the fact that apparently, in the Yandere Simulator universe, it is more common to think that things like the supernatural, demons, and magic are considered blasphemy and made up, just like in the US. We see this clearly in Oka's description, where Yanderedev wrote that she is completely convinced that ghosts, demons, and black magic really exist and wants to dedicate her life to proving that these things are real. See, Japanese culture is very much steeped in the supernatural and mysticism. The reason for that is because the majority of the Japanese population is polytheist, meaning that they already believe in the existence of multiple deities, spirits. After all, the main religion in Japan are Buddhism and Shinto, the latter of which literally revolve around the concept of kami, which are supernatural entities believed to inhabit all things. People found kami in nature, which ruled seas or mountains, as well as in outstanding men. I think it's important to understand that the way people in Asian countries, especially Japan, view the supernatural isn't the same as Americans or Europeans view them. It isn't counterculture to perform rituals and worship to supernatural beings. The only thing that would be unusual is the fact that they're performing Satanist rituals, I guess, if the abundance of pentagrams is to be believed. Mostly because Satanism is more of a western concept, I suppose. Satan isn't really a thing in Shinto or Buddhism, and of course my explanation for the Shinto religion is really really just surface level and in no way encompasses the whole religion which has a lot of different sects and variations and whatnot, so please uh, do your own research about this. But Considering Yandere Simulator is set in Japan, you would think that it would actually be more common for people to already believe in the existence of the supernatural because it's literally in their culture. So the occult club's goal is kind of redundant. 
But even going off of the original description, shouldn't they then be doing more paranormal investigations where they go out to haunted locations and try to get evidence of these creatures like in Phasmophobia? Instead, they're just sitting around doing rituals like a bunch of Satanist wannabes who are just doing it for the aesthetic. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the club was just meant to be a bunch of idiots who don't really know anything about Satanism or the occult and are just farting around trying to be as edgy as their lord and creator Yandere Dev. Plus, another thing that rubs me the wrong way about the occult club is how they literally have no hint of spirituality and mysticism when that is literally the whole point of the occult. Like, if anything, they should be the most chill kind of people in the school who like meditating, doing tarot readings, and are super into crystals and auras and spiritual cleansings. There's so many positive aspects to the occult that could have been explored, but surprise surprise, Yandev is ignorant and refuses to do any ounce of research, so likely he just went with his own understanding of the occult and ran with it. Unfortunately for the game, his understanding just happened to be devil worshippers. But I guess the occult club sounds cooler than edgelord club. And if you think, hey, that sounds like a really interesting direction to take this concept, then you're in luck because that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. As for the design itself, there's nothing really upstanding for me to make note of. Oka's appearance is surprisingly tame despite being intended as this weird rival who's really out there and off-putting. In fact, I think she looks really cute and approachable. But I guess Yan Deridev had to have her still look attractive to him. I really feel like the design didn't commit as much as it could have, so the end result just kinda looks half-assed to me. So, as usual, there are four things I will be tackling for the redesign today. First, I will create a new design. Second, I will decide on a new personality and name for the character. Third, writing her a backstory. And finally, implementing her into my storyline, which is why those previous videos are kind of essential lore, you could say. But. In the end, I'm just using Oka as a prompt and making a character from scratch. So starting things off, I'm just drawing the main body and as you can see here, I'm actually drawing from the feet up this time instead of from the head down like I normally do. It's sort of a new technique that I've been trying out and I think it's a lot better than what I normally do. Uh, you can see that the body is a lot more fluid, it's kind of not as rigid. And I'm trying to figure out a good position for her arms because I sort of had the idea that I wanted to draw her holding a sketchbook and yeah, it's kind of a struggle because I wasn't sure how far up her arm should be positioned or just how much they should be bending. I like to think I'm pretty good with anatomy but sometimes I just get in my own head too much and I end up overcomplicating things when I always try to draw a bit loose. So yeah, um, trying not to cage myself in, I'm just going for it and yeah, as you can see, I got the sketchbook in there but it's looking a bit wonky so I try to adjust it a little bit and also adjusting the hand over and over. Oh look at that, I can actually do hands now, isn't that impressive? And it, this angle doesn't quite look right to me especially because it seems to be brought a bit too far into the middle of the torso which isn't quite right with the perspective of where her body is facing so I just scrapped everything, redid it again uh, put it down a bit lower this time and I actually quite like how that looked. I just adjusted the arm a little bit so that she's holding the sketchbook up by her side and only with one arm because I am a cop out. The other hand I just decided to have up to her face because I think that would look kind of cute and 
I don't know, kind of communicate a more introverted personality just because she's sort of closing herself off a little bit in her body language and I ended up being really happy with that so that was the final arm position that I decided to go with. I'm cleaning things up a little bit because I I'm a clean freak and I like things being organized and not layered on top of each other because I don't like accidentally tracing lines that weren't actually meant to be there. I'm drawing the face now and with this new character, I really wanted to go for kind of a dreamy, ethereal sort of look, especially in her eyes, so I decided to try out a new technique today with the coloring and for the shape itself I wanted her to have like these really big mesmerizing eyes that kind of stare off into the distance like a space cadet she's really really chill and kind of off in her own world I see her as being a really artistic person as well which is why I decided to give her a sketchbook instead of like a demon summoning book like Oka. It's just it rubs me the wrong way so I'm not gonna do it in my design. And for her hair I definitely wanted to go for something like a short straight bob cut because I think it's so edgy and trendy. It's also kind of a really signature look among like goth and alt girls so I definitely wanted to emulate that in my character's design as well and I'm really happy with the design I came up with. It reminds me kind of of Mavis from Hotel Transylvania and I'm sure you all agree that she is an iconic goth girl so I was really pleased with that. And her ribbon is kind of worn a bit loosely like she's not really a stickler for the rules so she just has it kind of hanging around her neck I should say. Another modification I decide to give her were her boots which unlike the other students who just wear the casual academic loafers she's actually wearing these combat boots which I think really fit her aesthetic and for her stockings I wanted to give her fishnet stockings as well which I think would really be a nice replacement to the spider web pattern that she has on her original stockings. I just think that that's committing to the aesthetic a bit more and of course I gave her a ring choker which is super metal in my opinion a <laughs> i'm not funny i'm sorry but yeah aside from that that's pretty much her whole design done and watching the footage back i feel like i've really come a long way from my first redesign i've pretty much started embracing my own styles and how i prefer to draw and not comparing myself as much to other people or artists that I really like that I think, oh, I really need to draw like them when in fact doing what you like to do and letting it be a bit different makes it more unique to you. And one of the reasons I managed to realize this was thanks to today's sponsor, Wingfox. Wingfox is a professional online learning platform that offers a wide array of online tutorials covering CG, VFX, game design, digital art, animation, and more. The tutorials on Wingfox are delivered by global lecturers who have been in the industry for years. Currently, I'm taking character design and animation elements, which is taught by James Verabkinich. He was a Disney animator during the golden era where he worked on productions such as The Fox and the Hound, Pinocchio, Snow White, The Little Mermaid, and more. This course really helped me take my skills to another level and the way James explained all the theory was so simple and straightforward that it inspired me to fill up like 20 pages of my sketchbook in one sitting. His course is a very intuitive approach to drawing and if you have no formal training like myself, I think that you will really enjoy it. If you also want to check out James's course, Wingfox is giving all my lovely Calimaris $15 off with my code CAL15. 
Now is the best time to join Wingfox because they have a back to study promo happening with tons more discount codes to help you save money. And if this is something that interests you, check out the link in my description. Now, back to the video. While I start lining, I think we should move on to her personality. So, I mentioned snippets of it while working on her design, and that's because I strongly believe a character's appearance should reflect their personality. From just one look, you should be able to tell just what this character is about, so you can either perpetuate or subvert the viewer's impression of them through their personality. For this particular concept, I've decided that I want to do a bit of subverting expectations, so she's part of a very strange club, right? An occult club. She wears dark makeup, has a lot of piercings, and she wears scary boots and scandalous fishnets. So you would think that she's probably a punk rock chick who has a loud, intimidating personality, right? Well, I've decided she's the exact opposite. She's a very whimsical, quiet girl who is off and off in her own world. She likes to observe people, animals, and nature, which is undoubtedly unnerving for some people, especially if you happen to be the person she's watching. But really, she means no harm. All she wants to do is capture your likeness in her sketchbook. She's a talented artist and is currently building her portfolio to apply to an art school after graduation. She values self-expression a lot and she isn't afraid to be herself, even if people look at her strangely. And she certainly does have peculiar interests. Aside from being the leader of the occult club, which in my version, we will get to in her backstory, she is also really interested in vulture culture. Now, you might be asking, what is vulture culture and why is it so fun to say? I don't know, but I do know that vulture culture is a super niche community, mainly on Tumblr, that is based on the collection and preservation of animal remains. These people are basically hobbyist taxidermists who may choose to preserve an entire animal, body parts, pelts, or bones. Sometimes they'll even make art pieces or jewelry from those parts. As the name suggests, they don't actually go out and kill the animals themselves. Rather, they go out scavenging for roadkill or animals that died from natural causes. From what I've seen, the community has a lot of respect for the animals they're preserving, and the wiki also states that some vultures, which are the members of the community, incorporate the hobby into their spiritual or occult practices, which is obviously perfect for this character's theme. She is certainly a lover of the strange and bizarre, and her interests have definitely scared away a lot of people. But this character isn't the kind of girl who lets others' opinions of her affect her. Because no one can phase a woman who owns a long furby which she made herself. It's probably their club mascot too. If you couldn't tell, I've been watching a lot of Strange Aeons videos lately, and I'm realizing I've pretty much based this entire character on her. I love you, Tia. Now, while I was doing research for her backstory and just how viable this concept was for a Japanese character, that being an occultist, I found out that it actually isn't too far-fetched. Interestingly enough, the Shinto religion would be considered part of the occult if it were practiced in the West. As I've mentioned before, Shinto involves the belief and worship of kami, which are supernatural entities believed to inhabit all things. It's actually a rather similar concept to nature worship, and I say that very, very loosely, which is considered part of the occult in the West. See, the term Occultism has acquired intellectually and morally negative overtones only in the West and do not obtain in other societies where practices and beliefs concerned do not counter the prevailing worldview. That is to say, it's not a term that exists anywhere else but the West, I believe, because in other cultures, that's just their way of life. 
there's definitely some underlying racism there where unless you're a God-fearing Christian, then you're the spawn of the devil himself. So I do have contentions on calling the occult club the occult club because of the negative connotations and it's pretty much not a concept that exists in Japan. I bet you didn't expect to learn about all these obscure communities from a Kalimara video either, did ya? I'm just full of surprises like that. So because of those reasons, I want to change the club's concept for my version. Maybe instead of a vague occult club, we could call it something more lighthearted like the Sorcery Club, which was inspired by their love of Harry Potter that pushed them to learn more about Western witchcraft. And instead of summoning demons, their activities are about casting spells, making charms, hunting for haunted items, fortune telling, making star charts, and trying to open their third eye or something like that. That's pretty fun, right? At the very least, it actually sounds like a club that would exist in a high school. It's definitely out there and not everyone will be into it, but that's the whole concept of this redesign. When I filled in the base colors, I knew that I wanted this character to be really pale to match her otherworldly look. She's the kind of pale that can't tan at all and would just get a sunburn right away if she stood under the sun too long. I guess I was still feeling inspired by my Dimitrescu daughter's redesign, and thank you for telling me how to pronounce that. And if you haven't seen it, please check it out. I worked really hard on it. Naturally, I want her to have jet black hair to make her look sleek and mysterious and I also decided that I want her to be a senior so she could have the black uniform which works really well from a visual perspective and a story perspective. And speaking of story, let's finally get into the backstory I came up for her. As established, she is the founder and leader of the Sorcery Club. I completely forgot to draw in her armband and I ended up adding that afterwards, so please bear with me. She is the youngest of two sisters and her older sister, who was an alumnus of the school, now runs her own tattoo and piercing parlor. In a lot of ways, she idolizes her older sister who is also very artistic and valued self-expression and wants to follow in her footsteps. Her sister never got to go to art school even though she really wanted to because their family couldn't afford it. Determined not to suffer the same fate, she joins every single art competition she can to gain renown and some prize money to support her dream of going to art school. In her first year at school, she was actually a member of the art club, but she left due to bad blood with the other art club members. However, with her sister's guidance, she managed to develop her skills far beyond even her sister's ability at this point. Her sister was the person who did her piercings, and each piercing has a significant meaning to her. One of which being a relationship she used to have. That's right folks, this character is actually Seiya's ex-girlfriend. Seiya is my version of Senpai, for those of you who are confused right now. If you've seen his design, you might notice that he also has his ears pierced. Yep, they got a few of their piercings together when they used to date. Implementation wise, this makes her the most difficult rival to overcome so far because she previously had an intimate history with Seiya and very little is actually known about her due to her private nature. Remember that bad blood I mentioned? Well, Seiya has always been popular since first year because of his good looks, smarts, and athletic abilities. Even girls from the older grades liked him too. But he really connected with this character for her individuality and determination to become a great artist. He found her charming, and the time they spent together was always filled with interesting conversation. He learned a lot from her, and he found her presence oddly soothing. 
But as happy as they were together, people got jealous, and the other members of the art club, especially the female upperclassmen, started bullying her because of it. Of course, leaving the art club didn't discourage her from her passion or dating Seiya, and he undoubtedly got very upset that she was treated that way because of him. But she insisted that it was alright, and as we know, she even went on to make her own club. They continued to date until the fateful day that Seiya's sister was hospitalized. Seiya became more distant and closed off and things changed between them. However, she has been having doubts even before that because for a while, she was questioning her own sexuality. She loved Seiya but she began to realize that her love for him wasn't romantic. And so, him distancing himself was essentially the final nail in the coffin for their relationship. However, they remained close friends, and he was even one of the two people she had come out to as a lesbian. The other person of course being her sister. She isn't completely out yet considering the stigma around same-sex relationship in Japan is much higher than other first world countries. In fact, Japan is the only country in the G7 that does not legally recognize same-sex unions in any form. So it might actually be dangerous for her to come out, especially for her future. So because she is closeted, her closeness with Seiya can easily be interpreted as two exes who still have feelings for each other, which it definitely is by the rest of the student body. Seiya never corrects this, of course, for her sake. After all, it's much safer for her when people think she likes guys and people think the secret he's keeping is that he likes her too. And this leads us neatly into our implementation. As you guys know, this hypothetical game I'm designing isn't meant to be a bloody murder game where the draw is gimmicky murders of colorful anime girls. So don't give me the Oh, but that would discourage players from killing people, or this game is supposed to be a mindless murder game, because it's not. If that's what you want, then I'd say the original game is perfect for you, you don't need to be watching this video. No, this game is about psychology. It's all about playing the social game, manipulation, backstabbing, and gathering information, and using knowledge against your rivals. Therefore, murder should be the last option, and has the greatest consequences in both the game's lore and mechanics. And what I mean by that is that there are emotional and psychological ramifications not only to you, but to senpai as well. After all, you just killed someone he cared about, someone he was close to. Do you really think he'd be jumping at the opportunity to open himself up to a relationship after such a significant loss? So the main point of my hypothetical game is, are those things really necessary? Would destroying other people win you the affection of the person you love? Depending on how you play the game, it can be either a redemption story or someone's spiral into darkness and destruction. I've actually made an animatic on the hypothetical bad ending for the game, so go and check that out. Naturally, there's the path of destruction where you go all hitman on this character and just murder her. However, given her relationship with Senpai, there will be hell to pay if he finds out that you are the culprit, or if not, it would make it significantly more difficult for you to get close to senpai, let alone confess to him because he will be far too distraught and preoccupied with finding out who killed his close friend. This is where actually socializing with people, getting to know more about the rival, and finding information on them really becomes essential. However, the quality of information also starts to play a role. If you're just asking random students around the school, then they're obviously going to tell you that they were ex-lovers who still have feelings for each other, or even that they're secretly still dating. At which point, you start plotting sabotage or even murder. But if you get close to senpai's friends from the martial arts club, you might discover that 
they're not the greatest fans of hers either because of how strange she is and they definitely wouldn't let him hang around her if they had a say in it. If you befriended Reika, she would let you in on some circulating gossip that the sorcery club is actually on thin ice with the faculty because of some parents' concern. If you befriended Mayumi, she would tell you that apparently, this girl isn't very popular with the art club because she heard that they kicked her out. If you befriended Izumi, she would let you know that the true nature of Seiya's relationship with this character is platonic and that there was no chance of them getting back together. Obviously, you could see that depending on the difficulty of the rival, the more valuable the information they have for you is. And you need all of their testimonials to get the full picture. But I guess you could say that this character is actually a false rival meant to test the player's due diligence similar to the tutorial rival Reika in the beginning. Because if the player has not been befriending rivals or say as friends, you wouldn't get those vital pieces of information that would make your life a whole lot easier. Of course, then the player is still free to choose whether they want to use that information to hurt or befriend this character. Perhaps Himari or your player character could turn the entire school body against her considering her reputation is already rather low. Perhaps Himari could get her club disbanded by sabotaging their equipment and creating a fire hazard or inciting drama between the sorcery club and the art club and framing the rival for everything to get her suspended. And then you as the player will have to deal with the emotional weight of knowing you destroyed this girl's life for absolutely no reason at all when you find out that she's gay. But if the player took the time to investigate her, perhaps even using the information you gain to help her and befriend her, she would tell you that she doesn't even have any interest in men and that she goes on dates with girls outside of school. So in trying to destroy her, you're actually destroying your own chances with Seiya. If you focused on building your relationship with Seiya, giving him gifts, spending time with him, asking him to hang out, it would benefit you from a mechanic standpoint because he's less likely to just be swayed by anyone else. I think letting him decide to be with you organically is a much better outcome than trying to eliminate all other choices. Because what kind of relationship would it be when the person is only with you because you were the only one available? I think from a story perspective, this is the big turning point of the game where essentially the paths you've chosen start to come back and haunt you. Depending on Himari's sanity level, her coping mechanisms, her support systems, she will either start to break down or actually learn and take a good look at herself. You would be one step closer to the good ending by befriending this particular rival who would teach her to introspect and question her place in this world. She would start wondering why she was doing all this, why she's going through all these lengths and why she's so quick to treat everyone she thinks might take Seiya away from her an enemy that must be eliminated. Was she even pursuing him for love or a dark, twisted obsession? Where did the lies end and the truth begin? And most importantly, underneath it all, just who was she? Was she only pretending all this time so that people would like her or was this the real her? Is she just playing a role or is she finally becoming her own person outside of her mental illness? It's up to the players to decide where she goes from there. And I think that's also where I will leave it for now. While shading in her eyes, I decided to try out a new technique that I had seen on TikTok about making this sort of ethereal blurry eyed effect. And I decided that I wanted to do that look for this character because I think it would suit her aesthetic and her character concept really well. So you can see that I'm actually 
blurring out the edges of the irises instead of having them very distinct and I also used more of an off-white color instead of pure white for her eyes this time I think that looked a lot better um, I start just soft shading everything with a soft brush tool instead of using my sharper pen tools and also just putting in a softer light instead of a harsher light as well I thought it looked really interesting so I don't know what tell me what you guys thought of my little experiment here I personally think that I could probably implement it a bit better moving forwards but it was a nice first attempt and I definitely feel like I'm going to be using this technique a lot more moving forward in my art. I've just been trying to move more towards a painterly look in general as well as embracing my own style so definitely look forward to more changes because I have no concept of consistency. Is the final result. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and my redesign. I decided at the very end that I wanted to give her a pop of color to break up her monochrome color scheme so I decided to give her a teal ombre to match her eyes and earrings. People in my discord server were joking that Seiya had a type because I've drawn three of my rivals with green eyes now and honestly he probably does. The name I decided to go for her is Nico Mori, with Nico being her first name and Mori being her last name. Nico means two lakes, which is representative of her serene eyes, and I do love how she kind of looks like Shinobu from Demon Slayer. So I was really stoked about that because I love the art style of Demon Slayer. And I'm, I definitely think it influenced me a little bit. So yeah, I also tried a different technique today to record my video and audio. I feel like it lines up a bit better and I'm just experimenting with how I want to make my videos as well. So I hope that you guys liked it. I also want to thank you guys so much for 30k subscribers. I hope I can keep doing stuff that you guys enjoy and also thank you to Wing Fox for sponsoring this video. Please check out their website, all the links are in my description and if you guys want to support me as well, I have a Ko-fi account which you can donate to if you have some spare change you want to toss my way. I also have a Discord server where I post exclusive updates and sneak peeks of my latest projects. So join that if you want to be in a welcoming community of artists. Follow me on all my social media, check out my comic because that would make me really happy and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!